Des Hallett, welcome to Show Studio. Now, you had a really, really um, interesting relationship with Alexander McQueen um, and Lee McQueen because you did the casting for um, a lot of his shows. You started working with him in 2002, and obviously, he's so known for his shows. And I think that's one of the things that people who go to Savage Beauty really see it was such a sort of an amazing place to be if you got a ticket to a show and such a sense of theatre and obviously the casting and the girls and the way they embodied the clothes was such a big part of that. Tell me how you came to start working with him. I, um, I was already a casting director but I had done, um, I had run backstage at a lot of his shows in London mm. just because I wanted to be involved and see what was going on. Good. And um, I'd also been to see a couple of shows that, because um, I before prior to that I'd been a model agent, so I used to go with my models and stuff. So I'd always kind of been around, and then um, Katie England asked me. I think they wanted to have somebody who could commit time-wise because it was so involved. A lot of casting directors leave to go and do another, leave an assistant and go and do another show, and then come back. And mm. I think that it was so big what they were trying to achieve a lot of the time that they needed somebody there mm. all the time and I, I was really happy to invest the time. So you, when you say it was so big tell me more about that just because you know they needed, <coughs> a, yeah tell me why they needed so much time. Well apart from he was very specific about yeah. wh who he wanted or how he wanted his clothes worn and the idea behind the show or who that character was there was also the time constraints, so mm. we'd quite a lot of the time have to have people there from very early in the morning for an early. eight o'clock at night show. Yeah. And part of my daily rhythm was, the can she be there at 11? Can she be there at 12? Please confirm <laughs> that she can be there at 1.30 or, you know, whatever yeah. it was. So I had the whole day scheduled. Mm -hmm. I knew who was coming at 10.30. I knew who was coming at every, practically every single show. Yeah. So some girls were kind of half finished by lunchtime and then when the probably more famous girls could come mm. two or three hours four four hours before the show the other girls were ready and then you could ha allow enough time for dressing which always took i mean it takes a long time mm. did it, did it must take a particularly long time with the mcqueen shows because you mentioned the hair time. is so elaborate elaborate not, makeup. not just the hair but the dressing a lot of the time if there were corsets or if there were you know that mm. it, it and it had to be done in a very calm mm. um deliberate manner so sometimes you would take 10 and dress them or you know it, mm. it, it basically it, it takes a long time and so if you work back from a eight o'clock show an hour and a half, then hair and makeup, then the, mm. you know, and on forty girls, yeah. it it takes forever. I Especially on a girl on a show like, um, well, the last two, Plato's and Horn of Plenty, where the hair and makeup was so intensive. Um, Horn of Plenty, Guido did every single girl individually, so he looked at what they were wearing, looked at their face, and built their their. Coca Cola cans or whatever it was <laughs> yeah. around them and their outfits. So that took a long time. And then Plato's, um, they were it's a lot of weaving. And, stuff and but they had yeah. prosthetics on yeah. their face. Uh, the girls at the end were yeah. going back into the sea, so they yeah. had gills and stuff like that. And plus the shoes. I, look, I love that idea of that <laughs> call to the model agent. We need them here early so we can put their gills on. <laughs> I don't think that we actually trusted anyone with that information. You know? <laughs> no. Was there quite a bit of convincing though with some of the, because I think what's interesting when you speak to a lot of Leeds collaborators, they like they get it, like we interviewed Trina and she talks about that sense that you know, like you were all kind of, you were working towards the same goal, but I guess with a show, you know, you, it's not that it's not that intense group of collaborators. You're trying to bring in a lot of other girls, and was it was it hard sometimes trying to get the models to kind of understand it or get the agents to sort of invest that much time? sometimes I mean in general I would say that agents and models have always been incredibly helpful and you know they they, they want to be you know there's a, there's some people that you speak to that are huge fans and mm. they want to do everything there's some people that are just like oh god there's no money in it I can't you know mm. everyone's different mm. so um, I think the, the majority of people were were really helpful mm. um, but there was a lot of pressure to get people where you wanted them at the time, and somebody else also wanted them at that time. So yeah. it was a you know it was a constant balancing act, yeah. really. 
Mm. And tell me, one of the things that I find interesting is you said to me he was very specific, but I find it interesting um, that it seemed like he didn't have a sort of fixed idea of beauty. It wasn't like the girl from show to show to show was always the same character. It really did vary. It was very specific depending on what show it was. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, he would completely, if they didn't fit in with the story, um, for instance, the first show that I did, which was, it was, um, it was autumn winter. There was a lot of, I, I, can't, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was called anyway, but it was on a tundra and these, mm. these girls walked down this huge space and, and he wanted them all to look like Bjork, basically. He mm. wanted them to all look like they were from Iceland or Finland or yeah. somewhere. And, you know, when I first met him, go and find me these these girls. Well, there's always a height issue and a yeah. whatever else. So it didn't, that one didn't particularly work out that way, but the dance show Deliverance, Deliverance which was yeah. the second show I did. Could you really got thrown <laughs> in the deep end, didn't you? Wait, they were, I mean, when you think, when you think, God, and that was after that, and that yeah. was after that. I mean, oh, how goodness. kind of... Deliverance, like, find girls that can dance. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, yes, and also, you know, they want, he wanted... Um, to teach them, either to teach, you know, they, there was a time investment because so, there was a huge rehearsal with Michael Clark the day before. If they could dance, did they look right? You, you know, you couldn't just be in because you could dance. You yeah. had to look like you were in the thirties in the in the, yeah. you know. So that was a that was a huge, a tricky um, one. Yeah, my sister came to that show. It's the only show she'd ever been to. <laughs> I said. And then all like she must have been like, wow, your job's great. And then you're like, no, it's not always like this. Yeah. And, but tell me, because it's interesting, because I think one of the biggest things that I think he is known for and will be remembered for is kind of like, it is that notion of savage beauty. It's about broadening ideas of what is attractive and what is beautiful. And do you think that's something that did come across with his I don't his think casting? he always tried to, was to create beauty. Mm. I don't think that that was what he was trying. I mean, he, I mean, quite a few people have said that how romantic he was, which is the side of his character that people don't really talk about as much as the other side but um, I don't think he I mean the clothes were mm. really beautiful I mean mm. getting to see them again the other night at the mm. exhibition I mean even though I've seen them practically mm. all of them at very close we've seen them being dragged around the floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean you know they are breathtakingly mm. beautiful but the whole idea was not necessarily mm. that Mm. Aim. And tell me, it's interesting also to think a little bit about, just I think about the way he did, you, you mentioned kind of the romanticism, but I think also his kindness was kind of tied into that. And, you know, he cared a lot for the girls, didn't he? I think you can, we've got footage that we're putting up on the site of him on photo shoots and just the way he kind of moves some of the girls' bodies and stuff. He's really, there is this sense of he, he's very involved in it. He's really good at communicating and really mm. good at getting people to do what he wanted them to do. I mean, he's yeah. very enigmatic in that way um you know we all had to work incredibly hard but no one actually really cared that you yeah. were really putting 250 percent in all yeah. the time and he really inspired that in people mm. um it's not like he expected you to turn up and do it he kind of got you to do it somehow yeah yeah and was it the same with the girls they did want to do anything you know they would because some of them in Deliverance, it's amazing. I, we spoke to Michael Clark, and he, and you do get the sense that they kind of went out and did things that you never would have expected. Oh, I saw things in people that I really didn't think, wow, I, I mean, wow. Yeah. You know, because all of a sudden, I think it must be quite hard to be a model in some ways, is that, you know, you're not expected to show that much of your personality or, you know, you walk up and down, you're off. Mm. You know, so they were given a chance to, you know, every single moment on that runway was a picture mm -hmm. every you know it, they, they could make something that was different mm -hmm. well, we so. talked about deliverance but there's some other amazing shows one of my favorite ones is the the chess show it's only a game mm -hmm. because the casting for that is really intriguing because it kind of becomes part of the story and the narrative and the casting kind of does define the chess set doesn't it yeah tell me about putting that together because that must have been a complicated brief it, well, it was complicated, but it wasn't in a way because he was so right. This is what I want. I want six um, girls with red hair. I want six um, girls, Hispanic-looking girls. I want six, you know, yeah. he knew, six Asian girls. I know exactly. He knew exactly. Then I want two knights, two bishops, two queens, two kings. I mean, <laughs> you're like, done. <laughs> Okey dokey. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's quite a, 
I imagine that's quite a complicated way to try and it get back cast. It was ca- it was that one was kind <laughs> of a um that one was kind of difficult. It was it was complicated. Yeah. Definitely but, complicated. Cuz even like you were saying like trying to find like six redheads at that point, you know. Like, well, yes, yeah, so, I mean it they've got to be the right character and the right physique and the right walk and the right you know so to find yeah. to find six and and even in those days i mean it sounds like ancient history saying that but when would it have been 2004 mm. there weren't so many chinese girls then mm-hmm. you know to find those girls it was it wasn't it wasn't easy mm. no did you resort but, to kind of not resort to but did you find yourself often having to do things like street casting rather than just going to the agency. Well, funnily enough, for, um, for the chess, no, for Deliverance, he Lee himself found a girl really? on the street they, or in a club somewhere. I don't know where he found her that he wanted in the show, who was really beautiful. But we didn't, we never street cast, no. For the men's mm. I did, but not for Why not for the for men's, but not for the women's? Um, I think the difference in body shapes is yeah. a bit less difficult mm. on a man mm. than a woman. And I guess also, you know, his clothes, a lot of them, you know, just how tailored they are or how dramatic they are. Did you need girls who had, you know, even just like particular body shapes or very, very tall? The majority of them were. I mean, there were exceptions. I know that, you know, when Kate Moss, she's not the tallest girl. I mean, he, there are exceptions, but the majority of them, I mean, especially in um, Horn of Plenty, I mean, when you see those giant, I mean, literally <laughs> looking up at the girls <laughs> afterwards and those huge dresses with yeah. the thing with the shoes and you're like, hi, are you okay up there? <laughs> yeah, that must be tricky though to, to try and yeah. find people. That, and also just, I think sometimes can carry the clothes, not just in terms of like yeah. the style or the size, but like there's so much narrative in the clothes, isn't it? You need girls that can kind of, not bring that to life because it's already alive. Especially that, I mean, especially Horn of Plenty because he really wanted them to go out and really prowl around and, mm. you know, look at the audience and really take take them on, which mm. is never happens in a show. I mean, you don't, there's no eye contact no, ever, yeah. but any, ever, anywhere, but he really wanted them to go out and leer at people. Mm. Mm. It was very confrontational. And tell me, did he used to give, like... Oh, he always s- gave always gave um, direction mm. just before the show, mm. always. And tell me a bit about, I want to just go back to It's Only a Game because I think one of the things that I find interesting is if you look at his runway shows, like you do feel like even if you compare them to other runway shows at the time, you know, fashion isn't the most diverse industry when it comes to its casting, but it feels like he, that was something, not that he like tried to champion, but that he did want people of all different ethnicities and all different. He always did. He always, um, but it was never a thing. Yeah. It was never like a conscious, you know, he never thought, oh, I want to be diverse or whatever. Yeah. It was just the way that it was. Mm. I was looking on YouTube at some of his Givenchy shows the other day, and which I didn't work on, but they were um, always very diverse. Mm. Mm. And do you think that he did um, sort of change notions of beauty? I mean, possibly. I, I mean, I wouldn't know. I think that he just was very on his own and what he did. Mm. I don't think that he there were any there was anything to do with trends or no. you know he just did what he did. Mm. And did he have? And I, I I guess this is hard, but when he was giving you the instructions for each show, because you know you said that you'd go in and he would kind of brief you, and that often you know, you, the clothes would not be there because they weren't ready. Would it be about the story rather than about? The guy, he didn't really have favourites or anything, was it? it was he didn't have favourites, but he do, he would say specifically, I want I want this girl to wear that, or I want this girl, you know. Mm. There, there were, um, I wouldn't say, I mean, he obviously loved girls individually, mm. um, but if they weren't right for the show, then, then they, right. they, they didn't have a place. And I think that pe- people understood that. I think that they mm. really respected it. But he definitely appreciated their, them as models or how good they were as a model. Mm. Um, he didn't just see them as, um, you know, as bodies. I mean, if they were, I mean, I mean, people don't think they are, but there are good models and bad models. And yeah. I think that he, appre- he understood yeah. that. And do you think he brought the best out of? Oh, he definitely. I mean, he really gave 
people, the girls, the chance to really, you know, show something else besides how they looked and you know what and the girls body. must have just loved that it's interesting Nick always says that the girls were so devoted to him like they'd kind of do anything they'd never grumble and I'm sure you saw some grumbling <laughs> I didn't really I don't think so I mean I think it was difficult for them to be in a corset with really high shoes for a long time with this amazing hair and makeup mm. but I, don't, I think that, that I think that the, most of them grasped that it was they were doing something very quite different magical. and quite magical from mm. anywhere else Mm. And tell me more about that backstage environment because you must have seen some amazing things. You said you saw him sort of literally finish off clothes and cut clothes on the girls sometimes. Well, he did not cut clothes. That happened in the studio. But it, it, clothes were a lot of the time being finished mm. um, while the hair and makeup was being done. I mean, we went to the wire quite a, lot, quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. But he did it. I mean, you know, watching... I mean, I feel very privileged that, you know, a lot of the time... From the widows of Culloden, a dress would be more or less finished, except for the ends. Just mm. The girl would come in and 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 um, do her fitting, and then he'd cut, just get on the floor and just cut it in a perfect circle at the end. That's amazing. And okay, pick up the scraps. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what have you done with yours? <laughs> I made a cushion. A really bad one, but I made I it. I love that. I don't think I cushion. It's so good. And tell me, tell me any, any other favourite particular shows, because you love um, the girl who, that lived in the tree, and mm. I think that's an interesting one in terms of casting, because it's actually, in a strange way, kind of similar to Plato's Atlantis in the sense that the girl kind of changes and develops. Like, she goes yeah. from being one thing to another thing. It's more romantic in that. But tell me about casting for that one. I can't remember what the previous one to that was, but I mean, you know, being in the studio and watching these creations come up the stairs, I mean, it was mm. so beautiful. And I, yeah. lo I, I love India. It's m one of my favourite places yeah. to visit. And so seeing these incredible things and you do the fitting, then all of a sudden the jewels would come yeah. out. And like, oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, so... Um, she started, the, the girl started off... Um, really dark brunette very kind of victorian and ended up get becoming more and more um lighter and fresher and mm. you know they were, they were, i think the f first 20 girls are dark and brunette and mm. then they get br blonder and mm. blonder as the show goes on and did he often like doing that almost like having because people always talk about narrative in relation to the show you know from the set to the clothes to everything but did he quite like having casting that told a story where it wasn't so much a collection of girls, it was more like, yeah, like this story that would be told through, through the way the girls came out? I suppose so. I mean, I, don't, I think they were all very different. Mm. You know, you wouldn't say that about the widows of Culloden, but you can mm. see them all as individual characters. Yeah. For, definitely. And tell me about, because the final show obviously was Plato's Atlantis, tell me about, about casting that one, because that one's such an amazing one in terms of in terms of the casting, I think they all look incredible, but obviously that, that must have gone down to everything from like walking in those shoes to kind of like their body shapes because the dresses are so short. And It was pretty, that was a pretty huge show. And it, it, the first thing was the, the shoes mm. to see that they could walk and walk confidently. Mm. Um, was that often a problem with his shows? Well, no, I mean, casting any show, if you can't walk is, you know, I mean, that's changing a bit now, yeah. I think, because they're more into the picture that goes on the internet yeah. than the thing. But um, I th where were we? Sorry, I forgot. We were shoes for places at last. Well, the, I, I mean, <coughs> in a McQueen show, anyway, that is incredibly vital that yeah. you can walk and walk well. The set was so huge and open. Yeah. You were really out there on your yeah, own. You and really if it, I mean, you, I mean, if you were going to fall, you feel terrible and it, I mean at the end nobody fell and he turned around to me and said nobody fell were you kind uh, of predicting that people would fall no I don't it wasn't no one predict I mean we, we worked really hard to make sure that they didn't yeah but it must have been absolutely terrifying for those girls I think they all really rose to the occasion to be honest yeah. I think they all you know they it, it, you imagine if you spent hours having your hair and makeup done and you're dressed in this incredible thing and all these people are making you feel really great mm. that you are going to 
you're going to yeah, rise to it. And tell yeah. me about the way those girls look, because we kind of talked about it earlier, but it is really interesting because they're going back into the sea. It's this notion of kind of like, yeah, you know how we all evolved from the sea. He wanted everyone to kind of go back into the sea. And, and there was a statement on the ice caps melting and mm -hmm. water taking over the earth. And that was the only way. Yeah. Um, well, in that case, they got less and less sunlight and they got paler and paler and they, mm. they grew gills and you know, you, the prosthetics that Peter Phillips did were just unbelievable. And yeah. that, you know, that also needed no rushing because mm. as soon as you start rushing in that situation, it's really, you know, things, you need time and mm. it needs to be calm and, you know, it was, it was always great backstage actually. Was it? Yeah, well, I always loved it. Never you never saw Lee afterwards. Really? He, he, would, he would go and do his wave and straight off in the car. There was no... Why do you think he did that? I don't know. Maybe he needed some separation from it. He, you know, people hang out backstage and people come back and all of that. Yeah. There was never any of that. And did you enjoy working with him? It seems like, you know, it's interesting. It seems that you were saying that he kind of... The girls are the occasion. He brought things out of people. It seems like everyone who collaborated with him felt like they got so oh, yeah. much. Yeah, absolutely. He was really... I mean, he just inspired a huge amount of... Um, of loyalty and love and you know mm. you really wanted to do your best for him and really wanted it to um to work out and to be the best that it possibly could be mm. and has that stayed with you when you cast shows now do you always kind of remember those experiences and remember that he definitely taught me a huge amount you know mm. i've been in situations where everyone's panicking it's like we've got no need to panic <laughs> 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 this is not everything <laughs> This is not, you know, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> it must be, it just must be amazing having been there as well. I think that sounds really simplistic, but also just like being... Well, also, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, just acting cool. Like, that, like every, t every time mm. these things, you know, all of a sudden another creation would come up yeah. the stairs and you're m mind blowingly beautiful. Yeah. You think, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I'll just carry on. <laughs> <laughs> just get them all. <laughs> it just must have been amazing. I imagine it must have been like, you know, like his shows, everyone talks about them being such a sensory experience, but it must have been the same backstage, just watching it come together, just like... It was really good fun. Yeah. Really good fun. You really did feel like you were... I mean, of course, there were incredibly stressful moments, and mm. but um, you did really feel like you were part of a gang mm. and that you were doing, you know, something really special and really just, you know, you, I, I, I mean, from, I, for myself, I just loved being there. Mm. I really loved it. Well, you did amazing work. Thank you so Thank much, you Jess. Much.